Well, today, part of my crafting that I do is making candles. And here's my wax pot, and it needs to fill up, be filled up. So I'll go in and show you my wax, and I'll cut some and fill this pot all the way up. Now, I did use to... Uh, kitty, please. I'll show you what I used to do. I used to have a smaller pot, a smaller fry daddy, and I put water in it, and I would put my wax into here. I'd uh, usually do a pound at a time or two pounds at a time. Put it on here, tar it out, and put my wax in here, measure it, or weigh it, and then put it down in the, a small pot. That's how I started out. And melt it down to a certain point. And then take this pot out and stir in my fragrance oil and then pour from there. But now, I had my husband do one of these larger fry daddies, and we went to Lowe's, and this has been, what, two some years ago during the, where everything was hard to get a hold of and things. I needed a longer spout, but that, for heat. <laughs> but there wasn't, this, this was it. This is all I could get, so. I have to stack it up on something and kind of pull it forward, make sure I get this under there. So now I can melt my oil, my oil, <laughs> my wax, and I'll put my pour pot here, and I'll turn this on, and I have a cat under my feet, and it's tar, I, let's see, I'll tar it out. Right, tar to where it goes to zero. Then when I turn my spigot on, I watch this and I can get how many pounds I want into this properly. And that's the way I have it set up now. So I'm gonna go cut me some more wax up and add it into my pot. And the wax I use is 6,006. I'll show you when I get in there. It's a uh, pair of soy, kind of an easy melt, one pour. I do get, uh, oh, I do get some uh, dipping sometime around the wick, but I just take my uh, heat gun and heat it up and it, that fixes it. Well, I'm gonna go get some more wax to put in here so it can be melting and I'll come back and show you what else I do. Okay, here's my wax. I, let's see, I got mine from Candle Science, and it's IGI 6006 Paraffin Soy Blend Wax, and it used to come in a 60-pound box. Well, I was getting kind of, getting down low. I have one slab left, I think. Ordered some more, and it's now a 40-pound box. And it costs more, and the shipping's higher than what my 60-pound box was. I'd say I got this here for, when I ordered it, probably $100. And this is 20 pounds less, and it was $125 for 40 pounds shipping. So now I'll just, I forgot my gloves. I have to use plastic gloves, because this stuff's sticky. In there I keep my knife in there and you can see where I've just made little cuts and I'll cut it all up fill my plate and then go dump it into my uh, wax melting pot all right I have filled my pot up and I've put the thermostat at just about 200 and I'll wait for that to melt down and while that's my wax is melting, I'm gonna get my jars ready. Okay, it is a little chilly in my house today. It's cold outside, and my countertops are this, and they're cold. So I am going to heat my oven up and put my jars. I'm gonna heat it up to as low as it'll go, which is gonna be 170. 
and then I'll preheat my jars pre-wicked and have them ready to go when my wax comes out and has a scent in it. All right, here's what I do to, since I'm using the eight ounce jelly jars, and you go by the, you know, the width of your jar, and I'm only gonna need one wick. So I'm gonna be using the uh, 44, 32, 18Z, six inch tabbed wicks. I got these from Bitter Creek. I ordered some different kind and I didn't like the way they burned. So I've got a big old package of those down there. I'm just gonna leave them. This is what I prefer, but it takes testing on your part to find out what wick you use with the wax you use and the scents and everything. Am I out of frame? So I take a wick, what's called a wick stick -em. It's called a wick stick -em. And you just pull it off of here. And then I pull the little tab off. Then I use it just a plain straw. Well. That way I can hold on to my wick. It doesn't fall out the bottom. And then I center it in the middle of my jar and kind of give it a little pound. And I'm only gonna do three of uh, each scent. So I'm gonna start with this one because I don't wanna do a whole bunch. Okay, and I'll pull my tab off. Center it in my jar. Okay, I'll put these in the oven and let them be heating. I normally do more than this at a time, but for the video purposes, I'm just gonna stick with those three. And the scents I wanna pour today, I definitely want Christmas Hearth. I love this, it's such a, I don't know, it's got kind of a, A smoky smell but yet with a lot of good Christmas scent in it I should have pulled up each one but you can go on candle science and, and look it up and it'll tell you the notes that's in it and then another one from candle science I like is the cranberry African apple marmalade this is really good and then from Nature's Garden, this pumpkin apple butter is delicious. I will burn any of these. Just, I don't even have to pick one. Just pick, I just grab a jar, any of them. I like them. And this is a new one to me. I should have already had it made. I haven't made one of these yet, and Christmas is almost over, and it's called Country Christmas. I, hmm, a lot of Christmas smells. <laughs> with maybe, maybe some pine in it. I don't know, it smells really good, but I'm gonna try it. So that's the four scents that I'm gonna be pouring. Now I'm letting my uh, wax melt up to get up to about 180, I think, about 180. And I use this to test my wax. And when it gets there, I'll put my pour pot under it and pour my wax and I'll measure out. I'll show you how I do the scents here in just a second on how much I use per pound and how I figure that out. Okay, this is how I measure my oil. I'm going to use, I have three jelly jars and actually they hold just about six ounces of wax each 
even though they say eight ounce jelly jars, they actually hold about six ounces of wax. So, um, six times three is 18. And I'm gonna, I'm going to use 10% fragrance oil in mine. So I'm gonna turn on my unit here and put this little bowl on there. I'm gonna tar it out to where it's zero. And I'm gonna pour this uh, Candle Science Cranberry Apple Marmalade. And if I have six times three, 18 ounces, with 10%, that's 1.8 ounces of fragrance oil that I need. So, I'm going to start watching that. That's at 1.9, that's good. All right, and then as soon as my uh, wax or my jars are heated up, I'll go over to my wax and we'll pour some candles. Kitty. Okay, I'm gonna check what my wax says at, and it's at 180, so I am going to measure out, what did I say? I gotta tar that out, so that's zero. Six to 18. Yeah, 18 ounces is what I need in candle wax. So I'm going to watch my little thing there. Let's get that up underneath there. Okay, that's good. All right, now I'll take, let me set my jars aside for a minute. I'm gonna check what temperature my oil's at right now. I really didn't want that down straight on that because that is cold. And where's my little, there it is. Okay. Let's see, can y'all see? I'm gonna check this. And it's at 176 or 174. I like my I like my oil or my uh, wax down to 160 or below. So I'm gonna let this cool down just a little bit. It won't take long before I pour in my oil. down to 168. I'll be back when it's ready to pour the oil in. Okay, my wax is at 162. I want it just a little cooler, but I wanted to show you, this is a candle I poured, and I always keep my wick trimmed to a quarter of an inch. And I burn it, and then when I, I just normally put the lid over it to you know, blow it out instead of blowing it out and the smell coming up. I'll put a lid over it and let it go. And then the next time I go to light it, I make sure it is trimmed to a quarter of an inch. You'll get a good clean burn and you won't get the sitting coming up and the black around your jar. And if you watch that and take care of your candle and burn it properly, you'll have a nice candle. Okay, where are we at now? 162, just a little, just a little bit more. I could go ahead and pour, but I like at least 160 or below. All right, we're ready to pour in. And I used to, uh, as you can see, not long ago, I uh, colored my candles, but I've got to wear the last couple batches I've done. I just leave them the white color. It, saves time and that coloring is messy and I can move much faster 
and it smelled, all my candles smell just as good without the color in them, because they don't, they don't have a smell. But if you want to color yours, you can. Okay, and I am going to stir this for about two minutes before I start pouring, so that the wax and the oil gets well incorporated. Okay, I've been stirring this pretty good, and it's at 149, and that's good to pour. So I'm gonna get my jars over here. So you can see what I'm doing. Let me lift this up just a bit. Well, come on. There we go. And I'm using a, uh, just a wooden chopstick to stir it with. I'm just gonna wipe it down and use it on the next one. Now I'm pouring my candles. do I have left? Oh, I can go do the rest. Sometimes I get a little too much wax in here. Just a little. And I'll take one of these little pans, mini teeny tiny muffin or tart pan or whatever, and I'll pour the extra wax in there and put it in the refrigerator. This is a, a or the freezer. It is a soft wax a softer wax so it doesn't work real well for tarts but i can put this in there and just do this when i bring it out of the freezer and it pops right out and i use these in my my uh little burners you know that you have that's just a tip okay now i need to center my wicks and i use these i got them off of amazon and the last time i looked they didn't have any they weren't in stock because I wanted to order some more. But if I make, if I have too many candles made to where I can't use you, these, I'll show you what I make or what I use. And it works just as good and they're cheap. Okay, if I run out of those, I'll take one of these popsicle sticks or these lar larger sticks that you can get at the Dollar Tree and I'll get me a drill bit that fits and I'll drill that and use that and center it with this and it works really well and they're cheap and you can get your hands on them all day long. Okay, from here I'm going to let them cool and then once they get cooled I'm going to take and Trim my wick to one quarter inch. And I'll put one of these warning labels on the bottom. And you can either make your own label to go around the side, which I won't because the only half pint jars I could find have a pattern on them and that doesn't stick real well. So I'll just use a little two inch round and do up a label and put it on top of that with the scent. And this will go on the bottom. And they'll be ready to go. These are being made for gifts. I went to uh, my company Christmas party and one of my employees, well, she's really my friend too. She come up she, and after it was all over with, she goes, hey lady. And I said, yes. Yeah. She goes, where's my candle this year? It's like, oh dear. Because normally I do up candles and then set them out and let them smell and take one and she was looking forward to her candle this year and she didn't get one, but I told her she would before Christmas was over. So, all right, this is how I make candles and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I wanted to let you know that I don't know if, uh, we, this is Christmas week, you know, the last week and I need to go do some grocery shopping. I need to do some last minute gift shopping. 
um, and you know, cooking up some food and stuff. So I'm probably not going to film this week. And then we might go to my daughter's for uh, New Year's. So it might be possibly after the new year before I have another video out. I do need to take a break and I need to enjoy my family. And I kind of took a little break over the Thanksgiving, but I think I only missed one video with that. I might have missed a video, I'm not sure. This time I really need some downtime and not worrying about crafting. I need to get in my kitchen. I love to cook, I love, well I actually like to bake and spend time with my family. So if I don't have another one out for Chris, before Christmas, I, I wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And until the next one, we'll see you later.